Okay, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone. I'm Mike Wallace, Town Manager for North Brantford. I'd like to welcome you to our weekly briefing of the North Brantford Response Team. Um, and with me today are uh, Fire Chief Seward, Deputy Chief and Finance Director Anthony Esposito, uh, Police Deputy Chief uh, James Lovelace and um, me, and that's it. Today, unfortunately, we don't have Jim Buck and uh, we don't have uh, Mike Pascasella. Uh, unfortunately, they uh, could not join us. As you imagine, they have a number of uh, plans to go through with the state as they're ever working on all kinds of uh, different plans and testing and, and the rollout. So uh, they're tied up on other other calls. But um, as always, we, we try to uh, bring you this briefing every Friday at one. And our goal is uh, to bring you up to date on what's going on to combat COVID-19, uh, the virus, and provide you with reliable information uh, as we try to get through this all you know together. Um, the broadcast is, is intended to be interactive, and we hope that uh, you'll participate uh, and share with your friends and family, and feel free to post uh, your comments on our page and uh, use our dedicated email, which is public-comments at townofnorthbrantfordct.com. Again, public-comments at townofnorthbrantfordct.com. Uh, you can just, you know, if, if, if nothing comes up now, uh, certainly just use that email, post us a question. We can get to it uh, next week when we come out again on a weekly basis and uh, try to get you the answers you're looking for. Uh, but also um, our website, uh, www.townofnorthbrantfordct.com. You could also uh, reach us through that. And of course, our police, fire and emergency management uh, Facebook pages. In addition to the East Shore District Health Department uh, website, the State of Connecticut uh, website, and the Governor's website, uh, all uh, full of information uh, to help you through uh, um, deciphering what what you need to do, and um, great great information on all of those sites. So, um, as I get into my update today, we don't have a whole lot. Uh, we're missing the medical element with Mike uh, Pascasella, but I'll certainly give the standard update. And uh, before I get into that, of course, uh, thanking uh, all of our first responders, uh, doctors, nurses, everyone on the front lines for all they do uh, each and every week. And, and of course, uh, you know, I failed to mention uh, that we have other people out there that, that in the food supply chain uh, of our you know, supermarkets that have been out there on the front lines as well. I think they uh, deserve a nod in, in terms of what they're doing to show up at each day and uh, um, that's not a not an easy uh, situation. So I thank them for for all that they're doing and putting themselves out there, uh, which is an important part. And I, of course, I always mention that uh, this is an economic uh, pandemic, a health crisis that's turned into a, an economic crisis and, and a food crisis. So uh, for a lot of families that are struggling out there, um, it's glad to know that we've got our our supermarkets and, and stores open, and that our pantry is doing what they can to help and assist people. So uh, with that, I'll dive into our, our numbers. Uh, and again, I, I clarified last week um, that uh, our, our numbers are total numbers since the pandemic started. So it's what we refer to as the recorded number and uh, we're recorded 80 uh, at the moment. And I have to clarify that uh, with 80 positive cases since the pandemic started. Now, that's a lot different than than active cases, and and I don't have um, the the uh, uh, up to date numbers on those without having the health director here on this call. Um, but we can get that next week, if possible. Um, but I wanted to comment on that we get our numbers from the state database, and I reported out uh, Tuesday night to the council that we had eighty uh, eight, and that we had. Um, what we thought were eight additional cases overnight on Monday. That turns out it was not the case. Uh, that was incorrect. We are holding uh, the line at 80 right now. So that's a good news. Uh, that's a good trend. That means we're flat for the week. Um, and again, every day uh, brings something different. Sometimes we are, we are flat, uh, but we do get those reports every, every day. And we try to put that information out each week to give you a, a, an idea of where the trend is. And the trend right now is flat and that's good. So we're uh, holding at 80 right now and uh, we'll see where that goes. And obviously, you know, we continue to do what we do, which is uh, encourage everyone uh, in the community to 
abide by the, uh, the social distancing, uh, keeping a face mask, face cover, uh, and uh, don't go out if you don't have to. So stay safe by staying home and uh, you know, certainly wash your hands and follow all of the uh, guidelines and, uh, and you'll be fine. Uh, we'll get through this together. Uh, so that's the, the report on where we are with the numbers. And uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, the health director couldn't be here and Jim Buck EMD couldn't be here. They're working on plans in terms of testing. So the state is trying to roll out a testing uh, plan and we'll have more for you, I hope, to have more details for you next week. Uh, so we also, last week we spoke about the plans for schools. I hope that was informative. I hope that was helpful. We had the uh, superintendent, Scott Schoonmaker, uh, talk about that. Uh, and uh, we can certainly invite him back as we uh, get through the summer and talk about what the year is going to look like in the fall. And again, those plans are ever evolving. And when we have information, we'll, we'll share that in, with you. Um, so for today, um, I think before going into the uh, program about tax payment extension, just wanted to, to give a, an update on, on local businesses and uh, the, the uh, progress we're making there. As many of you know, uh, the reopening happened for restaurants and outdoor seating. We are processing as many applications as we can working uh, uh, with business owners. And I know that, uh, that both the fire chief and police chief and their offices have been involved. Uh, I think it's going smoothly. I'm not hearing any, any issues. It's just the paperwork, catching up with the paperwork and coordinating with East Shore uh, Health District and getting those businesses up and running. So I know that we've got some uh, that have already been approved. Some are, are, are coming through the process. Uh, but as far as I know, um, no complaints, and I'd, I'll just go to uh, the Deputy Chief uh, Lovelace on this, uh, but uh, what are you seeing and hearing out there? There we go. Now we can hear me. Uh, we're, we're doing great in town here. Um, as always, it's, it's our tight-knit community is just unbelievable and, and responds to, so well to the, uh, the ever-changing uh, guidelines that um, basically we see here on a, an hourly basis. We, we hear one thing, it changes to another thing. Um, and, you know, we're adapting, but the community is adapting as well. Um, we just ask that, you know, continued patience. This is, and especially for the businesses and the workers there. Um, they're under very strict regulations. Everybody wants to get back to work, um, but they have the regulations that they have to follow. And there's very strict um, penalties if they don't follow those, those actions. Um, so just be patient with them. They're, they're doing the best they can. Um, you know, another thing to note is uh, as things open up, we're, we're going to see more traffic on the roadways. Um, let's be cognizant. Um, it's summertime. School's about to end. You're going to see pedestrian traffic increase. Um, let's use our patience and our diligence out there on the roadways. Keep our speeds down um, so that everybody can get, you know, to and from where they're going uh, very safely. Um, and that's our main goal, get everybody to, to and from uh, their residences as safe as possible. Uh, we're still operating at 100%. Um, we're constantly uh, working on our PPE to make sure our stockpile um, is, is, is enough for the officers to respond to the calls. Um, although uh, call volume was uh, lower at, at sometimes during the pandemic, we're starting to see that increase. So we're, we're starting to go through PPE a, a lot faster. Um, we have seen a flattening um, this past week, which is great. And that's, you know, it speaks higher to uh, the community's involvement and their diligence of uh, practicing those guidelines. And uh, we can't ask for any more. Every, every person that practices those guidelines just helps us along the way and gets through this faster. So um, with all that being said, the, uh, with the community support and the uh, emergency services and the command staff and the teams, uh, I think North Brantford's on a great track and um, we, we hope to uh, proceed further with it. Great. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, I think you mentioned something there. A key word, patience. Patience is key. Uh, you know, it's uh, we're all adapting and, and trying to adapt to just a simple thing as going to the grocery store and picking up, um, you know, food supplies that you've got to have your mask on. And when you go in, it, it just it's going to take longer because the aisles are set up where you have your distancing and aisles are one way. And so you're not, you know, I mean, you know, I'm a frequent shopper and I do my thing in a haphazard way, you know, and, and uh, now you, you've got to slow down, you've got to pay attention and it, you've really got to be thoughtful about how to proceed. And so we, and I think you're right. I think the community has, has responded well, we're doing fine and we have, have uh, a good trend here. Uh, so that's good. We'll continue to monitor that. And you also mentioned PPE, which is important. And, um, you know, we're working on that is a partial 
rollout, uh, partial reopening is happening right now for the uh, restaurants and outdoor seating. As you all know, we have uh, June 1st is our, our hair salons and barber shops, uh, so forth. Um, and we've been assisting uh, those businesses with their PPE with in terms of masks, but also thermometers and other gowns and, and so forth. So uh, we have a list here. We've been contacting the businesses that have gone on to the state site and requested. Um, so we're trying to facilitate and we are facilitating uh, getting that uh, equipment out to those business owners. So again, if if you haven't uh, heard um, or you're expecting to hear from the state, the way they've set it up is that this you register with the state. It goes on a database. We get the list. Uh, Jim Buck brings the uh, goes and gets the supplies, brings that, drops off a, a list for us, and then um, you can contact us, and and we're making contact to, to let let you know that it's here, it's ready for pickup, and we've been doing that here at Town Hall. So um, we still got more and we're in actually uh, in the second round. Uh, so we have a, a second list that we're working off right now. And uh, we're, we're here and ready to assist uh, in getting that out. And so um, again, as part of this uh, partial reopening, uh, the fire marshal's office has been, in, you know, an integral part of that, Chief Seward. And, and I and let you know that we've, we've had some great success in terms of uh, pushing out the applications and, and uh, the fire marshal building official and zoning uh, official all working together. Uh, and again, trying to, to do, do both the applications and the PPE. And, and I know you've been working hard uh, in your department and uh, been, been able to get uh, supplies out. Uh, but what are you seeing on your end? Are, are, are things uh, looking pretty good? Good afternoon, Mike. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to to be able to push information out there. And um, everybody's exactly hitting the nail on the head, and that is patience. It, it, it's so important to recognize the fact that um, we're operating in an atmosphere uh, that we're all not used to. Uh, so we need to uh, roll with the punches, so to speak, and adapt to the changes that take place on a, a routine basis. So, uh, so with regards to uh, openings, uh, the fire marshal's office and the building official have been uh, very vigilant in doing their inspections and having great cooperation from uh, restaurant owners and business owners in town, making sure that the public safety is of prime importance and adapting to whatever is needed to facilitate the opening of their business. And uh, I, I see a Believe it or not, I see a lot of smiles on the faces of people in town that places are, are back open for business and uh, they can finally get out of their houses with restrictions and with the use of face masks and, uh, and go about their daily routine. So, uh, so with the May 20th uh, change in operations, that applies to the fire department as well. So we have had to adapt to the way of uh, how everybody else is doing things. So whether it's training in the firehouse, taking temperatures of members, screening them medically uh, before we do things, uh, we, we follow the same process as many businesses are today uh, to conduct our business. Uh, when it comes to protecting each other, it's so important that we continue to, to wear our masks. We receive PPE on a weekly basis that's issued from the state. So we, we are building up that supply. And as uh, indicated by the governor, uh, we're looking to have at least a 30-day supply in reserve so that if things change down the line, uh, we're ready to protect uh, our members. Uh, similar to the PD, we are seeing a increase in the amount of calls that we're responding to compared to the 20% drop that we saw just a couple months ago. Uh, I, I, I really have to say that the, uh, the lone healthcare facility in town, Evergreen Woods, has done such an outstanding job in protecting their um, their clients, protecting their residents, protecting their workers. And uh, that should tell a lot about the facility that we have in our community. So when you look at protecting workers uh, from an OSHA standpoint, you can do things administratively, engineer hazards out, or as a last resort, use PPE. So I, I think we've all taken those three steps and employ the use of PPE on every call that we go to today just to protect ourselves 
from uh, what could be out there and protecting uh, our patients from ourselves. So please continue to uh, be vigilant and use those face masks. So, so important. Um, with regards to uh, something you mentioned earlier, Yale uh, Center for EMS, uh, just got off the phone with them a short time ago. Uh, there's a study going on to look at antibodies and first responders that is done in-house at Yale, as opposed to a recently announced project that the state is working on. Uh, so there's the possibility of first responders getting antibody tests locally uh, in the very near future. Uh, so with that said, uh, we continue to be vigilant and, uh, and move forward in this progress. Great. Thank you, Chief. Uh, appreciate your efforts and, and the departments. And I just want to go back to the business side of partial reopening that um, just to state again, if you haven't heard from us with respect to uh, supplies, uh, then certainly call us 203-484-6000. Uh, uh, Gina Cox is a uh, designated person to assist with the um, those supplies. Um, so call us, let us know, we can make an arrangement. Uh, we're also working on our plans here for town hall in terms of partial reopening uh, for appointment only, uh, just to try and, we are staffed uh, at minimum levels here. We're trying to get back as long as we get our supplies that we need in order to get uh, and make the modifications we need to do to town hall uh, to, to keep everyone safe. And we're gonna work in the direction of trying to, to do a partial reopening and then to opening, depending on where the data is and guidance from our health department as well. Uh, but we'll try and get there. And uh, obviously I think people know as some of the other um, um, dates or um, um, reopening phases, if you will, uh, with June 20th uh, being one of them for um, gyms. And uh, obviously that affects our, uh, our community center, uh, our senior center. Uh, those will probably be opening later, uh, obviously for, for specific reasons in terms of vulnerable population um, and, um, and the function that they have. So that in libraries uh, will be coming later, but we are working on a, on a plan. I am working on a plan with our department heads on, on uh, a partial reopening for town hall, and we'll have those uh, available soon. And again, it all dependent upon uh, supplies. So um, something that's a work in progress, and we'll have an announcement on that soon. Uh, so uh, next, I want to move to uh, Anthony and, and uh, Anthony, bring Anthony Esposito, our, our finance director, in to speak about one of the programs that the town council authorized with respect to helping uh, our taxpayers and residents here in, in the community about the tax uh, payment extension program and the floor is yours Anthony if you want to take us through that and and sure. I know there's some important dates that you want to get out there for folks and, uh, and there are a few other programs that we're working on and in addition to getting reopened uh, for businesses and reopened for ourselves uh, just feel free to share uh, the program with us sure thank you very much uh, as you mentioned as you mentioned the governor in uh, his executive orders did put some language in place that allows for an additional 90 days without interest on tax payments. Uh, it's not an automatic 90 days. There's a form that you must fill out. You have to attest that you suffered a 20% decline in your household income to qualify for this program. It's on the town's website, as the manager mentioned, www.townandnorthbranfordct.com. Under the right-hand side, there's a scrolling latest news section, and you'll find the link there for the deferral fillable form. You fill it out, you uh, send it into the tax collector with a proof of residency, primarily your driver's license or other, other proof you wanna submit. And the, uh, the 90 days is granted to you uh, without question. So our goal today to mention it was just to make sure that anybody who felt they fell into that category did not lose this because you have to apply by July 1st. It has to be in the tax collector's hands by July 1st. This pertains to any payment that comes due from April 1 to, through July 1st, which captures this coming year's tax bills. So again, if you've been financially impacted to the tune of 20% of your household income, you qualify for this additional 90 days without interest. And again, there's a form on the website under the latest news category, scrolls to the right-hand side. It says, I think it says COVID-19 deferrable form, fillable version. You fill that out, 
you attach the documentation that's required and you send it into the tax collector and you'll you'll get a response back saying that your program has been been um, accepted but we wanted to get the word out there so that people didn't think it was either a an automatic deferral of 90 days or there was nothing needed to to capture that so it is there is a form required and we're using that form also for some state reporting purposes to get a a gauge as to how many folks in our town are actually impacted to that level, uh, which will help us when it comes to time for funding resources and things like that from the state. I want to mention, if I could, one other item on the website while we're talking about the town website. Uh, under the information tab, there is the sign up for Code Red. And Code Red is a, the device that we use, the program that we use to send things out when you get the reverse 911 calls for items that warrant that level of, of notification. But there's also intermediate levels below that where we can send out text messages and or emails to folks that have signed up, residents and taxpayers. And that's a program we like to use more frequently uh, to get you know important items that are out there, whether it's uh, you know has waste collection is this weekend or the library is running a program or the senior center is running a program, things that don't warrant the, the phone call but are definitely something that we want to get out to the uh, the residents. So I would encourage everybody to go to the town website under the information tab across the top, drops down, go to code red, and you could you could sign up again. You could put in your, your cell phone number to get text messages. You could put in your email. You'll get email blasts from us as well. And it's just a tool we want to use to get information out to people uh, and not have to rely on the reverse 911 calls, which we kind of are reserving for more uh, substantial events, if you will, things that are truly important. Everybody has to get it, you know, right away. So I'd like to, if you could make that plug as well for people to get onto the code red system, it would be, be beneficial. There's only, and the, the code red phone system works off the 911 database. So everybody that's in the 911 database gets those calls. It's roughly, I, I want to say 7,000 calls go out. But as far as the um, email and text, it's like 500 people have signed up. So it's not as effective as a tool for us currently to get that word out. So we can encourage people to sign up for the, the cell phone, for text messages and the email. We can use that as a means to get some important items out to the town, but not as important as that would warrant the phone call. Thank right. you. Yeah, you're, you're right. I think that's an important resource, a very valuable resource. I hope people will uh, share with others and uh, and participate and sign up. and. Um, promote for us, uh, for anyone that's uh, listening and watching, that'd be great uh, because it is, it's a great resource and it's a way for us to, to share information, push out information. And uh, we are at the point now where we'll, we'll just kind of pause and see where, um, you know, I don't have any specific, uh, I'm looking at the, uh, at the uh, email uh, posts and I don't see any, I'm not sure, Anthony, if you've got any uh, on the Facebook in terms of posts. I do not have any emails, I should say, but there, maybe there, there is, might be some posts. There's a couple. There's uh, okay. one from the Gulf of North Brantford, the Gulf Station. Thank you for the reference. that they believe that was when the fire marshal uh, comment was being made by the fire chief. Oh, sure. uh, Diane Ramsey, thanks for the weekly updates and thank you for all you're doing and, and have done. Uh, Ann Wilson asks when the town hall will be open. Okay. Yeah, uh, and so on that on that uh, question, um, the goal would be to try and do a partial reopen appointment only for June 8th. And, and again, it's a caveat that if I can get all of the necessary uh, supplies and um, everything in place for that, that would be the goal. And I, I think we'll hit that. Hopefully, uh, we've got some some things that we're waiting on to to put in place, but we're we're almost there. And then from there, again, we've got to watch the data, look at the data, and again, guidance from the health department, but I think we could do uh, beyond that, uh, looking at uh, the rec department and our senior center and libraries. I believe the library, I've seen a plan that they're working on for a curbside service first. And again, they would not be open at any time before June 20th, but they could get the uh, curbside uh, up and running uh, shortly. So I'll try and get an update uh, for next week's um, briefing. And uh, our goal is, is for town hall. Uh, to have uh, us back and uh, uh, open for appointment only. And then beyond that, we'll, it's just going to have to be an evaluation. But that's where we're at. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, I don't see any more uh, emails. I think maybe at this point, uh, we'll, uh, we'll do part of the um, 
positive messaging and, and, a, and a point uh, programming note, if you will, uh, that I was approached uh, by uh, Reverend Vance Taylor, North Ranford Congregational Church, uh, to put together an event for Sunday, uh, a, a memorial, if you will, uh, in, in, in reference to the pandemic. And, and it's uh, unfortunately that uh, we've hit a milestone across the country of 100,000 deaths, which is tragic. And uh, Reverend Vance uh, contacted me about a, a prayer uh, event, a memorial uh, to do here at Town Hall on Sunday, which I think is a, is a great idea to bring the community together uh, for prayer and reflection. Uh, to to know that we're all uh, you know struggling with this in one sh manner shape or form, uh, and that we know uh, families that have been affected, and uh, the the mayor is going to read a proclamation. Uh, certainly, folks know that the mayor uh, was uh, tested positive and 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 came through this and uh, fought off the virus, and uh, you know it, it's it, it hit home it hits home, and uh, I think this is a, a wonderful way to uh, bring the community together. So we're going to do that at two o'clock, invitation only. But what we're going to do is film it and broadcast it uh, so that people uh, can tune in and be part of that. Uh, and uh, certainly um, uh, Reverend Vance is coordinating and great idea, but he'll also have, uh, we'll also bring the clergy together, Reverend Lucy uh, LaRocca and uh, Reverend uh, Robin Blunden uh, and others, I believe. Uh, but again, a small gathering that will film and broadcast live on our Facebook web page, uh, Facebook page. And um, I think we'll even have uh, flags and a press release that'll be going out soon um, to to plant there, um, and just and, and just a time to, again to to pray and reflect uh, about how this is affecting uh, all of us, and uh, that we're uh, do all doing what we can uh, to um, be safe, and uh, hope that we can continue to bend the curve and and continue in a trend that is uh, healthy and safe, and that we can. Uh, open and reopen uh, in a safe manner. So uh, I just wanted to make that programming note and thank uh, uh, Reverend Vance Taylor for, for reaching out to me and, and uh, being able to coordinate this for, for the community. So um, with that, uh, gentlemen, and I also uh, want to open it up to you for any last comments uh, before we sign off for today. I'm all set. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we're good. So it's uh, it's a great week. It's a good trend. Uh, let's keep it going and uh, everybody do their part. And um, just to bring back what Anthony said that that code red is so important. So the town could only get these products in to be able to communicate with the public, but the public has a part to uh, to get out there and sign up. Um, so so these products work to uh, to notify everybody. So that, that was a great point today. Super. Great. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate your time as always and your input uh, and be safe and we'll see you next week. Thank you.